What's up everybody, it's Base Jalaren, it's hot as fuck and I'm ready to die. So I figured now is finally the perfect time to start talking about Yubisaki Milk Tea again and here I have in my hands Volume 2, Very Tasteful Panties right there on the cover which is just a good sign that we're about to break into some real fine shit, some top notch high quality stuff. And we're just going to dive right in. I'm going to do my usual thing where I have the book in my hand because my memory is worse than a goldfish and I will immediately forget everything I wanted to talk about and cover. So here we go. I might look down at this. That's just a warning. So, Yubisaki Milk Tea begins, Volume 2 begins anyway, in the, the best way you can begin any manga. And that's with some filler. So we're continuing on along with the plot that, the subplot, that um, Yoshinori no longer wants to cross-dress. He feels he has grown too manly, and he needs to stop cross-dressing. So he's approached by his really seedy photo, pho like photography store manager, and he asks him, like, hey, I need you to pose for some more pictures. And Yoshinori is all like, I don't do that shit no more. I look like a dude, I can't cross-dress for you. And dude's like, well, you got to bring me some women's then, because of course. And I, th I think there was like a deal somewhere in there, but I've completely forgotten it at this point. But he, so he goes to enlist people that he knows for this photo shoot. And of course, the first person he approaches is Minamo, fucking homewrecker, the least favorite character of the whole manga. And he asks her, in the worst way possible, in a way that makes me kind of wonder if he even understands, like, how to even speak to people, because he comes up to her middle of class, everyone's still in class, by the way, he comes up to her in the middle of class, and he, like, comes up to her desk, and he, like, slams his hands down on her desk, and he's just all like, could you please wear a wedding dress for me? Which is the best way to enlist a friend in a photo shoot involving wedding dresses, and they have this back and forth where she's like, why don't you get Hidari to do it? Hidari is like your girlfriend, isn't she? And he, he's doing this weird thing where he's chosen Hidari, but he's doing this like sort of like half-hearted thing where he's all like, well, Hidari's cute, but you're beautiful, which is b a bad sign. And so then he goes and enlists Hidari, and of course Hidari, Hidari's fucking down for it because she just wants to ride that Yoshinori dick so hard. And he just, then they have the photo shoot, and that all is well that ends well. There's your filler for the manga. And then we cut to um, Minamo, and she has decided that being hot is attracting too many dudes who aren't Yoshinori. So she goes back to looking like a nerd. Which, fine, you know what, that's like the one good thing that she does in this entire manga, is all like, the whole, I've taken off my glasses and I've put down my hair, suddenly I'm beautiful and desirable and sociable, it's, it's a dumb trope, and I'm really glad that this is the, like, like the one good thing about Yubisaki Milk Tea is that it goes and subverts it, and she goes back to looking like a nerd, but she's still like super sociable and super friendly with Yoshinari, and he thinks that at first, like, oh, she's gone back to looking like a gross nerd. She's no longer going to want to talk to me. But she's, like, super open about talking to him because she, too, wants to ride the SS Yoshinori. And she approaches him. She's like, hey, I want to hang out. And he's all like, why? Because rightfully so. And then she explains that she undolled herself up. She put her hair back up and she's put her glasses back on because she was hit on by a guy, and Yoshinori's like, oh, good for you, you've moved on. But of course she has not, and she, like, flips out at this. Because, of course. And she, the next day, she goes and she's like, hang out with me again, but this time do it in drag. So, we start this, like, very short subplot where they always hang out, and Yoshinori's always dressed up in his Yuki costume. And they do, they do this really light flirting where, um, sorry, uh, Minamo is very convinced that they can only be friends if Yoshinori is dressed like a girl, which okay, fine, sure, whatever. 
And she, in this, in this, in this chapter, reinstates Yoshinori's confidence in his cross-dressing. So he goes back to doing cross-dressing after this. The cross-dressing element is reintroduced because Minamo really wants the D. And the only way to possibly get the D is to get him back into cross-dressing so they can hang out and be like girlfriends together. So... And then they're like talking, and then it gets like stupid romantic for like a second. And they start calling each other by their names, she's calling him Yuki, and then they kiss, and Yoshinori's like, friends don't kiss Minamo, like he's like the most oblivious motherfucker to ever exist in like mangadom. And she's like, aw shit, yeah, you're right, and she starts to cry, because of course she does, Minamo's main thing is that she just fucking loves to cry. And that all right, so so their friendship has been reinstated. Shit is a we were beginning we are beginning the cycle of hell that Yubisaki Milk Tea intends to just drag us along for for the next like seven eight books to go. So the next chapter we introduced to the objectively only good character in Yubisaki Milk Tea, and that would be the lesbian. Because, of course, the lesbian is the only good character in this manga, and she is Hidari's friend, and she it couldn't be more into Hidari if she tried. She is the good end for Hidari, and of course Hidari never never takes her up on that, which is fucking... Ma <laughs> makes this manga even worse. But yeah, we got the lesbian, and she, like, does this, like, really, like, she just flirts with Hidari, and she asks Hidari to arm wrestle with her. It's fucking cute, by the way. So the arm wrestle... And then the lesbian. <laughs> I'm going to keep calling her the lesbian, but she has a name. Uh, what's her name? Kagami. We're gonna, but I'm going to refer to her as the lesbian, because that's just easy. So, they're arm wrestling, and Kagami, the lesbian, reaches up with her other hand and grabs Hidari's hand, and she uses her other hand to cheat and win at the arm wrestling game. And Hidari's like, what the fuck, you cheated. And she's like, well, I just wanted an excuse to hold your hand. And Hidari's like, oh, that's cute. And she's just oblivious as Yoshinori to the fact that this really cute, like, I, I hate to use the word Lolita, but that's literally what she is. That's her, that's her trope in terms of her looks. She's a very, very cute little, like, cl like classic Japanese girl. But it's completely gone over her head that she just got flirted with, and all she's got in her mind is Yoshinari. So she does the same trick to Yoshinari when he's over at her house. It's cute. Whatever. And... Let's see, what the fuck else happens? He go and then, and then it cuts to, like, Yoshinari. After, like, he lies down on his bed after he'd already left, and he, like, imagines what she'll be like as, like, an adult and in a wedding dress. And it's like, are you into Hidari? Because you are picturing, like, her in a wedding dress possibly marrying you as an adult. Or are you into Minamo, who is a motherfucker and I hate her. But, anyway, so... It cuts to, like, Yoshinari and Minamo hanging out after school. Of course, Yoshinor Yoshinari is dressed as a girl, and they're walking home from school. And the shit hits the fan. The shit just... Be like, the we start throwing shit at the fan at this point. Because... Hidari spies these two walking home from school together, and she's just like, what the fuck? And she's like, feels utterly betrayed. And she thinks, like, like I guess the, the, the line of thought is, Manamo's very smart and very, like, mature for her age. So Hidari thinks, the line of thinking is, is so long as if I'm mature, if I'm super smart, Yoshinori will like me. But what really has to happen is that he's got to grope you and you got to cry, and that's, that's what'll get you. But, anyway, so she brings up to Manamo during their, like, tutoring session, she brings up, she has, like, she's, like, in, like, like a second year in a middle school or something, and she brings out, like, this, like, really high-level, like, high school, like, math textbook, and she's like, I'm gonna start doing this, and Manamo's all like, you're just a kid, you don't need to do this yet, she has no idea what Hidari's ulterior motives are, she, she, she's not even in her, like, like, in her, like, sights at all, she doesn't care, so... He'd already, like, very, 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 very into studying this textbook, so she's, like, got her nose buried in it, like, the whole entire chapter, and the lesbian is all like, what the fuck are you doing? You're being stupid. This is stupid, Hidari. You don't need to do this, which, again, just proves my point that she's the only person in this manga with sense, and that's why she's my favorite, but, and then she explains, like, this is the only way I can get his attention, and Kagami's, not Kagami, yeah, her name is Kagami, yeah. She's like, you're, you're fucking no idiot. 
you got to have more confidence in yourself. And then it cuts to, like, gym class, and I guess Hidari's been overworking herself, and she faints during, like, running. And once again, Hidari's all like, I gotta, I gotta push myself to the very brink to get this man's attention. And the lesbian's all like, oh, you're such a fucking idiot, Hidari, and she hugs her again. And this manga continues to tease me with the perfect relationship that could have happened but never will. And then Yoshinori hears about the fact that Hidari has fainted at school, and he's like, I need to get to her right away. He's, she's my childhood friend, and I love her. And he goes, and he's, he's about to go peel out towards her school on his bike. But Minamo insists on coming with him, because she's a bitch. She just... You can see, like, there's a brief period where... <laughs> Yoshinori pauses and he hesitates and he thinks, is this a good idea to bring her along? But he brings her along anyway. And he's like, get off the fucking bike. And she's like, no, nah, because she's a selfish fucking bitch and I hate her. But anyway, he goes and he finds her at school. And she's like leaving school. She's, she's fine. She's okay. But he insists on giving her a piggyback ride home. And... And then, and as they're giving, as he's giving her, like, a piggyback ride home, and Amo's hanging out in the back, and she's like, why is Hidari making me so nervous? It's because she is a romantic rival to you, you idiot. Now, now, now that Hidari's in your peripheral, now shit's just, now we're continuing the cycle of shit. The cycle of shit is f f starting to get into motion, getting into, like, the fuck, the shit. And so we have this next chapter. It's kind of filler, but it's kind of not. And it starts off with... Um, Yoshinori is, like, he taps his friend on the shoulder as he's, like, leaving or coming back from, like, soccer practice. He's like, good job. This, uh, put a pin in that because that's going to be important later, is that whenever his friend, like, comes back or goes to a soccer practice, he, like, pats him on the shoulder, like, good job, buddy, you did it. And... Um, it, it turns out that Yoshinori used to play a lot of soccer. Like, soccer is, like, this weird, like, background element in this entire fucking manga. Because we also want this to be a sports manga, too, out of every single fucking thing that's been jammed into this manga. And he talks about how he used to play soccer a whole bunch ton. But he didn't want to get scars on his knees because scars on your knees ain't a feminine thing, girls. And he's like, that's why I quit. Because I didn't want to have scarred up knees while I was dressing in drag. Because I want to be pretty. And then he asks Minamo to take photos for him again. He's got his own camera. And he's like, she's like, no, she's very uncomfortable with this. She does not, she's not game at all. And then he pulls out, what is it? It's a track babe outfit. He pulls out a track babe outfit. What the fuck he's doing carrying it around? I don't know. But he's got one in like in his fucking school bag. He's like, can you put this on for me? And she's just all like, fuck, dude, no. But then he, like, flirts with her. And, like, like he, he, like, pushes her hair out of her face. And he's just all, like... He's like, I think you're nice. And he, like... I feel like Yoshinori is secretly aware of what he's doing. And he's just trying to get this woman to do what he wants. So he's like, oh, yeah, this girl wants the D. I'm just gonna touch her face. And she's gonna do whatever the fuck I want. And then she's like, fine, I'll put it on. Just leave the room and I'll get changed. And she gets changed... And then Yoshinori has, like, a pity party outside for a second while she's getting naked. <laughs> like. I don't know what the fuck he's pitying himself about. I honestly, his mood, like, instantly changes from, like, all horny, like, put on this track suit for me. To, like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to change her into what I want. I feel so bad. Like, oh my fucking god, dude. But then she comes out, and she's she's wearing this, which we get this really nice, tasteful upskirt shot. And he takes all these pictures of her. She's looking hot. And he calls her beautiful, and then he says he's jealous of her. And then, and then, and then we're going to take that pin that we found at the very beginning of this chapter, where whenever his friend's coming back from soccer practice, he pats him on the shoulder, and he's like, good fucking job. Because he's in his Yuki costume still. He's still dressed as a woman. And he sees his friend, and instinctually he pats him on the shoulder, he's like, good fucking job. And his friend's like, who the fuck are you? And it's all like, oh no, we've made a mistake. And so they like, and so Minamo like grabs him and they run away because, oops, we've, we've accidentally interacted with your friend while you were dressed as a woman. And then, and then we get another subplot, 
where, because we also wanted a BL element in this fucking manga too, because his friend has fallen head over heels for Yuki. And he's like, Manamo, your friend, who is she? And Manamo's all like, well, she's very shy. She doesn't like men. She's not going to want to talk to you. And he's like, please, I just want to speak to her just for a little bit. I promise not to do anything seedy. And so she's all like, could you talk to him for me? To Yoshinori. Just to, like, clear the air. So they're, they're, they're trying to conspire to get this guy to not be interested in Yuki anymore. So he no longer, like, is going to bother them. He's going to leave them alone. So she introduces, formally introduces his friend. I think his name is Wataru. Yeah, his name is Wataru. Anyway, so she introduces Wataru to Yuki, and Yoshinori's trying to stand, be like very standoffish. He's, he's trying to act like a huge bitch to him, so he leaves her alone. And she's like, alright, well, the only way, it'll, the only like instance where I would ever like consider dating you is if you gave up soccer. And he's like, yeah, I can't do that. And she's like, well, the fuck, dude, we can't be together. He's trying very, very hard to dissuade him from being romantically interested in Yuki. But he's he's taken he's taken some romantic um like 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 pointers from Yoshinori because he grabs Yuki and he pushes her up against the wall and he's all like, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up on you, Yuki and he's Yoshinori is just all like I've tried my fucking hardest and he still fucking wants this. This is so bad. But then Manamo steps in. She's like, no, stop. What the fuck are you doing? Let's go, Yuki. And then it turns out that Wataru, after this, dislikes Yuki even more, even though the entire time she acted like this cold, stone, cold, icy, like, bitch to him the entire time. He's, like, still into that. And then... They... So it cuts to him and Hidari kind of walking home together, and they catch um, Yoshinori's sister making out with her boyfriend, and Hidari's like, oh my god, that's so cool, I want to be like that. And Yoshinori's all like, no, you have to stay pure and good and young, because you know, we got to attract the lollicons to this manga somehow, all we got's the lesbian. And so he like has this talk with his sister, he's just all like, don't kiss out in the fucking like middle of public, Hidari will see you, and I want her to stay pure. Of course, his sister's all, like, down for it. Down for Hidari being exposed to all this sexual shit, even though she's, like, 14. Because she wants Hidari to grow up as quick as possible so she can marry Yoshinari so all her dreams can come true. Fuck. And then we have this moment where Hidari's in school and she's, like, talking about kissing the lesbian. Which we have to keep teasing the fucking, like, Yuri element in this fucking manga, too. So we get this, like, scene where she's, like, all up close to her. And she's like, what are you doing? And she's like, I was thinking about kissing. And it's like, fuck you. And they actually do kiss, because they have, like, a practice kiss. And it's supposed to, it's it's played off as cute. It, it, it's Hidari's first kiss, and it's with the lesbian. And I honestly feel that that's very sweet. And I really wish that they ended up together in the end game. And this manga just keeps on teasing me with the good shit that could have been. But no, we have to descend further into hell. And so Hidari asks Yoshinari like like later in that day, she's like, Hey, have you ever kissed anybody? Have you had your first kiss yet? And of course Yoshinari thinks back to when he'd pressed Manamo up against a fucking wall and kissed her to shut her up. And he's like, Nah, I've never had my first kiss. Which, I mean... To be fair, that's a horrible first kiss, and he is right to try and cover that up, but also, we're gonna put a pin in that one, because that's going to cause problems for us down the line much later in this manga. And so Hidori's all like, well, why don't I give you your first kiss? And they kind of talk about it for a second, and then they kiss. Which is, you know, whatever, sure. They kiss. And then... He's thinking about, like, the kiss, and he's all like... He doesn't want to hurt Hidari, and he's thinking of all the things that he could, he could accidentally let himself do to her. And he's in the tub, and he's getting hard, by the way. We, we, we are explicitly told that he has a boner. And his sister sees his boner, because we have to have the older sister see his boner, because we have to have the incest element in this manga, too. Because we have this manga is for everyone, and also nobody, because this manga sucks, and it's trash, and I hate it. 
So we kept to the next chapter, and it's just like, Hidari's sick. She's got a cold. She's mad sick. And Yoshinori's at her house trying to, you know, nurse her back to health. And we get this scene where she sits up. She's covered in sweat. So, of course, the first thing you see is her nipples poking out from underneath her shirt. I'm not going to show you, but trust me, it's there. Because it's, it's underage fucking nipples. We see too much of the underage nipples in this manga, and it makes me so uncomfortable that there's so many nipple shots for Hidari. It's like, stop. Stop showing me these little girl nipples. Stop it. But, but the manga's all like, no, we're going to show you it more. So we have Yoshinori know, help her undress herself because she's delirious from fever and she doesn't care what's going on right now. So Yoshinori's undressing her and he takes off her top and it's all like full on titties. And at that point, she finally comes to her senses and she's like, what the fuck? Get out. I'm going to dress myself. You've seen me naked. It's embarrassing. And then Manama comes over because she's her tutor and they have a relationship that's kind of like friendly at this point and she comes to like visit her and then Hidari is all like oh I, I shared my first kiss with uh, Yoshinori yesterday which is a lie it's not her first kiss and it was his first kiss too which is also a lie but she doesn't know that and she's like, it was so beautiful and wonderful and then Manamo takes issue with this like she could have honestly been all like she obviously does not know about, like, the rapey kiss that her and Yoshinari shared at one point. She, but she's just very upset with the fact that Hidari thinks that she, sh that she stole Yoshinori's first kiss because she's a jealous bitch and she's jealous of a 14-year-old right now who's not even in her league. But, so she calls Yoshinori out, like, into, like, the hall of the apartment. She takes him out of the apartment, apartment, like, room and into, like, the hall. And she's talking, she's like, yeah, so, um... Hidari kissed you? What the fuck is that? And Yoshinori's uh, like... He, he expresses that he has like all these concerns about how he's afraid to, that he's going to hurt. He's going to ruin Hidari with his touch. He wants her to stay innocent. And... And then Minamo's like, I might... She like brings up that she might be obsessed with him. But they kind of resolve things. But of course... We have to have, like, the ridiculous fucking drama element because Hidari walks out as Manamo's mentioning the stupid rapey kiss. And she's all like, oh, shit. This is bad. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have listened. And she's she runs off out of the apartment down the hall because that's Hidari's thing. Hidari doesn't like confrontation. Hidari just runs the fuck away. And, but this time Yoshinori finally actually chases after her, and of course to up, like, the drama, it has to start raining. And so he catches up to her, and he's like, you fucking idiot, you have a cold, you're running around in the rain. She's like, don't touch me, you lied to me. And then she, it ends on her crying, and then we have a side story that's unrelated to the plot about more incest, because, sure, why the fuck not? It's a side story about this random, like older sister, younger brother, who are legitimately an incestuous relationship, because we need more of that in this manga. Of course, we need more incest in our manga. Of course we do. We have to attract every single kind of nasty pervert to this manga. But yeah, that's how it ends. Hidari's crushed because her heart has been broken by Yoshinori, and this will not be the first time. This will not be the first time that he causes her to cry, that she breaks down because Yoshinori just can't fucking make up his goddamn mind. And, yeah, so begins the awful hell cycle that is the Yubisaki Milk Tea Love Triangle plot. And that was volume two. We have a long way to go, and I'm going to try and up these, upload these videos a lot, like, quicker, maybe possibly, like, maybe more than once per month. But until then, I will see you all in the next video, where we will continue our, like, venture down into the pits of hell that is Yubisaki Milk Tea. And I hope to see everybody there. Bye.